So this is a 2004 Acura MDX high mileage, low value vehicle. The owner of this vehicle is a friend of mine and he wants it fixed because it's his everyday driver. It's a work vehicle, right? It needs to be repaired in a way to where it does not look like this anymore. It looks more like it used to before it come in close contact with a tree. And that's pretty much it. It needs to not look like it was crashed and it needs to function the way that it should. So that's our job is to fix this thing in a way to where if you walk by it in a parking lot, it's not gonna scream, I've been crashed. So let's get into it. We've got the parts and stuff, and it shouldn't be too bad, although the damage is worse than you would think. So this thing is a perfect candidate to me for the quick fix because the value of the vehicle is so low. Taken to the dealer, you know, you'd have more invested in this area of the car than the whole thing's worth. So we're using aftermarket parts. I'll show you what I've got, and we'll start tearing this thing down. So for a front bumper on this vehicle, I went the exact same path that I took for the little Kia repair that I did for my wife a while back, and that is buy a aftermarket bumper pre-painted. Now this was shipped to my door for 250 bucks painted, which is hard to beat. Although it is aftermarket, it's covered in baby powder just to keep it from getting scuffed up in shipping. So, you know, it's not perfect. It's gonna get some damage from the folding and from the shipping, but it's not going on a vehicle that's perfect. So it's actually a, a really good compromise and a good cheap repair for an old vehicle. The guys that paint these actually do a pretty good job on them, from my experience anyway. This baby powder's kind of a pain. So a good tip for a beginner is to take all the fasteners out of one part, put them in their own little baggie or individual compartment. I like to use these Stanley boxes. And when you go to put the thing back together, whatever it may be, it'll go back together a lot easier. Take a little notepad, a little piece of paper, slide it in with the fasteners, and you just can't forget that way. Little tip that I use on occasion. If you ever crash a vehicle, make sure to pick up your pieces because those can be handy in the reassembly. So another helpful tip is to assemble the new part as soon as you disassemble the old part. That way you know where all the fasteners go, the order of operations is still fresh in your mind, and there's no guessing. If you wait two or three days, sometimes that makes things a little tougher. So it's best to do it right while that information's fresh in your mind. So there's two new fog lights for this vehicle along with the new headlight to replace the damaged one. I like to put two headlights in them, you know, if I'm doing one for myself. That way they both are nice and shiny instead of one faded old headlight and then one new one. But, you know, wasn't my choice. 
and it doesn't really matter. So you can't have too many of these plastic push clips. You know, either they're broken in the vehicle or you break them getting them apart. So these kits are cheap, nice to have on hand. So here's a look at the undamaged side. We can see that this is just about 90 degrees, right? Pretty, pretty close to it. The fender just comes out, connects right to the edge here. Now let's go look at the damaged side and compare it to this. So you can see that that is back probably a good four to six inches. There's our fender after we unhooked it and pulled it out a bit. And that bracket's way back. So we need to, to decide here where we're gonna pull at first. Uh, we're folded in a little here too, and that's doubled up, so that's gonna be kind of hard to pull uh, given the tools that I have to do this with. So let's just decide to come straight on. We'll drill a hole through here. We'll anchor a chain to that, and we'll go hook up and see if we can't pull this out a bit. When it comes to a tree versus a car, the tree almost always wins. certain that the only thing that's going to happen is that these vehicles are going to get drugged together. Really this needs to be in between two trees, but we're going to try it like this just because we can. I got to put something over that chain. almost work too good. So make sure your battery's unplugged before you go hammering on anything, especially frame rails and stuff when the vehicle has airbags. I don't I haven't heard of that happening, but I'm sure it can. So there's a pretty big kink down here that I'm using a hammer and a chisel on to try to knock out. But I've still got a lot of force on this thing with the come along. And sometimes that's what it takes. Just keep the force on it. Use a hammer and a punch to knock out some of the kinks and stuff. And it seems to work. That's the way we used to do them at the body shop all the time. Just whatever it takes to get the metal back out to where it's supposed to be as long as you don't damage anything else in the process.
amazed how much you can get done with just very little. Come along, piece of threaded rod. What are you doing, little guy? So that came out a lot better than I thought that it would. I figured I'd have to hook this between two trees and pull from it, but not too bad. Spray a little undercoating in there so it doesn't start rusting from scratching all the paint off. And you just adjust it as everything uh, gets fitted on here. It should be fine. Looks pretty good. So in my opinion, this is one of those jobs that I think about anybody could do that has a basic understanding of mechanics. There's no advanced degree needed for a repair like this, especially when you can buy your parts pre-painted. It's easy to get pre-painted fenders, easy to get pre-painted bumpers. You know, it's pretty much plug and play, other than the pulling out of the sheet metal, which you've seen I did with a come along. You know, there's no, uh, you know, it's not brain surgery, right? So got a vehicle like this, try to fix it. You may be surprised how easy it is, especially when you're not dealing with frame damage or driveline damage. It's just cosmetic. So it is important that all of your bolt holes line up and you're not left with a handful of extra screws when you're done on a project like this. And it's pretty easy when you got the new part to fit everything. That's what I'm doing. Just trying to pay attention to the body lines going off places that I don't think are bent and then comparing that to all the other holes in it. Then if it's out of adjustment, you just grab your adjuster, which is a, a very common tool in the bodywork trade and adjust things a bit until it does fit. Good. Oh man, that's gonna that's gonna work, I think. Be happy with that. Those lines. everybody's got their favorite uh, part of a car that they love working on and mine my most favorite is the fender wells the inner fender wells just absolutely love putting those in
So there you go, the quick fix, although this vehicle is just as good as it ever was, just as safe as it ever was. You know, the airbags weren't deployed, it didn't get into the frame rail or the drive line of this thing, so it was the perfect candidate for a fix like this. Otherwise, with factory parts, a vehicle of this age and mileage wouldn't have been worth fixing. So $250 bumper, and I forget what the rest of the stuff was. None of it was expensive, and it was all of it was a lot cheaper than buying another used vehicle. So there you go, that's the way you get into a vehicle real cheap is if you can buy them with a flesh wound like this one had because anybody with any mechanical ability at all could have done what I did to this thing. It didn't take, you know, there's no magic in it. So looks good, body lines, a little mismatch there and there, but I'm not for sure that that wasn't always like that. This bumper fit as good as any factory bumper I've ever put on. That's not always the case with aftermarket parts, but the, better, the newer ones, the newer aftermarket parts seem to be much better than some of the old stuff I remember messing with. I remember messing with fenders that just didn't fit at all. And you're like, wow, is this thing even made for this vehicle? But that's just not the case with these parts. They bolted right up. So looks good. You never know it was crashed. So I'm on the home stretch of getting the airline installed for this shop. It's the Max Flow or Max Line kit that I'm using, and I'm making a loop entirely around the shop. That way I can pull down at any point that I want and have a high flow, solid air connection anywhere that I choose. Got to get this finished before I can move my compressor and stuff outside. The weather hasn't really been cooperating with me too much this week. It's been real cold, so I've been working in the shop. So I've already covered this kit in previous videos, so we're not going to go into you know, detail here on it. But if you pick up one of these Max Line kits, pick up the bender as well. This thing made my life so much easier, especially if you've got a lot of conduit and stuff that you need to snake around. It's, it's worth it to pick up the bender.
so the loop around the shop is complete. I'm going to give you the run around real fast. So we put a union here where in the future we'll probably put a T drop down to a coupling. Another air coupling and then on the other side of the door here we're going to drop down to a hose reel and potentially another quick disconnect. And then the long wall which will have a couple drops off of it. On the back wall, we'll drop down from a T down to and go through the wall into the compressor. Haven't done any of that yet, obviously. And that's it. Run around the shop. Looks pretty good. I think, I think that'll uh, supply plenty of air. So I'm glad to say that that all the hard work to the airline is basically done anyway it wasn't the funnest job you know, up on a ladder drilling those drilling those concrete blocks and setting all them anchors for the clips but it's done now it's easy to underestimate the time that it takes to do a job like that and if you don't have a laser and you have a use for one highly recommended and this thing has helped me out so many ways. Come on. So my sighting finally arrived. Let me get this unloaded and we'll get a look at some of it. So let's get a look at these shingles together. Man, I'm ex so excited that these are here. I look forward to getting these installed on, on the wall of the shop here. So man, that is a nice looking shingle. These are, like I mentioned, white cedar, B-grade, squared and rebutted. And these are untreated. Now you can get these in all kinds of different flavors as far as the stain, the amount of stain, the color, on and on and on. I chose just raw because for one, this wall doesn't see direct sunlight and it doesn't get wet at all, actually. Maybe a little mist in the air that gets blowed on it. So these should last an extremely long time. Now we could have went with hardy board, vinyl siding. I just don't like the look of vinyl siding. And I think for this shop out in the country next to a waterway, it's gonna be hard to beat the look that you're gonna get from a cedar shingle after it ages a bit, starts turning gray and black. It's gonna look good, it's gonna look real good. Let me show you the fasteners that I'm going to be using to attach this to the wall and maybe talk about my plan of attack for the installation, at least of now anyway. So here's a look at the fasteners. They're inch and three quarter by 0 .092 in diameter or 44.4 by 2.3 millimeter. So a skinny nail, because we don't want to split these shingles because they are likely to split. There'll be some that will obviously. Uh, and we don't want them to pull because wood swells and contracts and it's likely to pull a nail that's not ring shanked. So skinny little nail, ring shanked for pull resistant, hot dip galvanized so it doesn't rust and start striping our shingles. So that's what I chose to go with as far as a fastener. Let me show you the nailer that I picked up. You're talking thousands of nails to put these shingles up. So I've picked up a nailer as well. Let me show you it. So for the siding project, I picked up a new nailer. This will run from two and a half to one and a half inch long nails. It is a Metabo coil nailer. Now my other nailer that I picked up for the roofing on this shop, it made life so much easier that I couldn't imagine driving all these nails, especially having to work on a ladder on this hillside. No, thank you. I'll keep at least one hand on the ladder. So this was a, this was a must have for all those siding nails. So there you go. That's what we're going to be using to run all the nails. Also picked up some loose nails, some finished nails for ones that will be exposed, both hot dip galvanized, right? just like all the rest. And then some box nails, just for the random loose nail that you need to run by hand. A box of nails like this is only three or four dollars, so worth to have around even if you only use a handful of them. They, they store well on the shelf. So I have a good day, maybe day and a half, of work that needs to be done to this wall before I can even begin to think about shingling it. I still have to 
uh, weather strip around these big windows. Still have to make the outdoor frames for them. Still trimming the house wrap, flashing around one of the standard windows, on and on and on. So still got a lot to do. I'm just trimming off some of this excess house wrap. I don't know if you can see the water down there, but it's freezing rain actually at the moment. So not good if you're out on the roads. That stuff is dangerous. So see that? Just ice. So that ice is still coming down pretty hard. You can see it building up on the branches. Hopefully it doesn't get much worse than this. I remember as a kid we got a big ice storm and man it just devastated the forest around us. The trees can't handle all that extra weight from all that ice and any branch that's any bit weak just breaks out and topples over huge trees. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But it is still coming down quite heavy. So we'll see. At least with snow you can drive on that, but this stuff just shuts everything down, which is not good. Shuts us down anyway. Hopefully it slows up a bit, or turns to snow, it'd be okay. So when conditions are like this, the birds have a hard time finding food. Everything's covered in ice, so they really gather around the feeders, and you'll see birds that you may not see much of otherwise. It's got so many limbs on it, it gathered so much ice that it's just leaning all the way over. Glad it didn't break. Broke, yeah, but that's not, not too bad. So I'm running the planer or thicknesser, whichever you prefer today, trying to get some nice sized wood, same long leaf yellow pine that I've used for all the trim work on this project. I'm trying to get enough to where I can do the trim work on the outside of these large windows, that way when it comes time to do siding, I know what's going on. And I used to stress so much about finding every little nail and tack in this wood before I run it through the planer so I don't damage the blades. And no matter how hard you look, even if you run metal detectors over them, I've got one that I've used a lot for this. I still miss them on occasion. But the good thing is that the planer always seems to find them. Um, especially if there's a new set of blades on it. Let me show you. So there's one. And there's one. Little tacks. This was flooring, and it was common for people to use uh, little tacks, little small nails, in order to hold down throw rugs and stuff so they didn't slide around all the time. And those little guys right there will eat your blades up. There's things you can do to make it still work out, but I hate hitting those things.
So these windows are already panned, but this external trimming or panning is just an extra precaution to keep water from getting under the window. Because these big windows are custom, they don't have the out outer seal like you'd get on a factory type window. So I'm just doubling up on these to make sure that they're not going to get any water in them, although this wall doesn't even get wet. You know, just one of those things I wanted to do. So I decided to do nothing fancy on the outside of these windows as far as trim goes anyway. I'm just going to box them in, use some quality lumber, and call that good. You could spend a lifetime making super nice trim for these windows, and uh, I've got enough to do. So we're just going to box them in real good. They'll look nice, and uh, call it good. So there's a quick peek of what I'm wanting it to look like. So the bottom of our Tyvek here is where the oak meets the block. So we're going to overhang that with the, the bottom shingle by probably an inch, maybe inch and a half. This bottom shingle will be kicked out a little from the wall with another row of shingles behind it. And then we'll have even four inch spacing. So we'll have three rows of shingles right that come to the bottom of the window seal here. It's just so everything works out. You gotta figure that out first. And then we'll have a, uh, it'll work out the same at the top of the window as well. So you gotta think of all that before you get started or else you end up with a piece of a shingle below a window like that, that long with two nails in it and just looks funny. So there we go. It's gonna look good. This will get urethaned and it'll be nice. All right, guys, that's it this week. A couple more hours on this wall and it will be ready to get the shingles put on it. Then I wanna get started putting a roof over the back of the shop for my rotary phase converter and my compressor and move that out and hook up these air lines. So it was a lot of work to do uh, before all that can happen, but you know, it's, it's moving forward. That ice storm kind of shut us down for a couple days here and uh, we don't normally get ice storms. So kind of a rare event around here. But I'm glad it didn't get any worse than it did. It could have been really bad. So I normally don't work on cars on my channel. So hopefully that opened a few people's eyes to the options that they have available to them. You know, you don't always have to take a vehicle to the body shop when it's just lightly damaged, especially if you have some mechanical ability. Those parts are cheap. You can get them on eBay, pre-painted, get them shipped to your door within a few days, pull out any minor damage and put them back together and you're ready to go. A car like that lasts the guy who owns it for the rest of its mechanical life anyway and no one will ever know that it was wrecked and no one will ever care because it looks looks fine. So that's it. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers, anybody who supported me on this project. I definitely appreciate it. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes Hold on to your dream Oh, I know you wanna scream Since the day you're born You're just a flower on your own Waiting for the sun to
Hoping to break through